we're giving one more minute for, uh, to people to join in and we'll start. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning from Washington, D.C. Good afternoon to you in Europe and Israel. A very early good morning uh, to Monique uh, in San Francisco. Um, we are very happy to have you here. My name is Ifat Alon Pere. I'm the head of the Economic and Trade Mission in the Israeli um, uh, Embassy in Washington, D.C., representing the Minister of Economy. Um, we are very delighted to have with us today prominent um, people from the IFC, from the World Bank uh, Group. Um, the ministry, the Israeli Ministry of Economy is working closely with the IFC and uh, is also, I'm very proud to say that we are um, also um, uh, donated to uh, one of the most successful funds of the IFC and I'm not the one to say it. Um, a program take a marriage that um, got a reward from the previous World Bank president uh, for uh, being uh, innovative, especially innovative. So we are very proud to, to have that in our record and to continue collaboration, the collaboration with the IFC. And in collaboration with both IFC and with the Ministry of Finance in Israel, uh, we, are, we have joined forces here today and we have with us, um, as I said, four guests from the IFC. Uh, Paula Alayo, who is the principal investment officer and it's also the country manager for Israel. Um, Oceano Nakulima, the director for Western Europe. Monique Mazek, the senior industry specialist of health tech. And Wuchira Shukla, the senior investment officer of disruptive technologies. All hopefully very relevant to you uh, who are with us in the audience. Um, we are gonna um, hear the presentation and we're gonna leave at the end about 15 minutes to questions. Please use the Q&A button, not the chat. Easier to manage. Um, and we urge you to keep in touch with us, follow um, up on our future events. Each one of these events are really tailored to assist you in doing um, your business better and hopefully also doing better to the world. So Paula, I pass you the word and I hope all of us, I'm sure uh, that all of us would enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Yifat, for that introduction. Um, if I may, I'll pass it to Usainu Nakudima, who's our director for Western Europe, including Israel. So Usainu will speak uh, first, and then I'll give a quick overview of what we already do. Usainu, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paula. Thank you, Yifat. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. I would like me too to welcome uh, everybody to this uh, uh, webinar, to this workshop, and, and to, think, to thank really warmly uh, our partners in Israel, the Minister of uh, Economy and Industry, obviously, but also our shareholder, the Minister of Finance. You know, Israel is a very important partner for us, IFC, and you will see it for the presentation that Paula will give, both in terms of the portfolio that we have with Israeli companies, but also uh, how we work together uh, in some of our flagship programs, like 
tech emerge that you mentioned, Ifa, but also the FTIFC uh, transformational awards that we do uh, we do every year. Uh, just two words about IFC very quickly. We are part of the World Bank Group, as you know, and our shareholding is uh, mostly, I would say, all countries uh, of the United Nations. We uh, have been here for more than 60 years. Uh, today, our yearly volume of operation is about $20 billion, but we have very high ambition. In the next 10 years, we want to increase steadily this amount, and in 2030, to be able to do more than $48 billion a year. So the, all this is in emerging markets. And what we want, uh, part of our strategy is really to bring innovation from advanced economies uh, like uh, Israel to emerging markets. So that's why we are very excited about this type of uh, engagement. And uh, just quickly, I, have, I would like to share three reasons why I think uh, this conversation is very timely. Uh, the first one is today, uh, health is being really upgraded as a priority in IFC as well as tech and digital. Uh, I, I, was, I was in a call a couple of days ago and I heard our new managing director say that uh, you know, health and education are managed today by uh, a small team, a manager, and he will upgrade it to a director level. That's one sign. And the other one is uh, Monique and Hoshia who are here are both uh, from uh, an, uh, an A team in IFC, uh, developing uh, disruptive technologies, but also uh, with uh, having uh, experts uh, in this field, and I'm very excited to have them share their knowledge uh, with us. Uh, the second reason why it's timely is, and with no surprise, the COVID-19 crisis. As you know, IFC is really trying to uh, contribute to addressing it, first by increasing the manufacturing capacities of medical equipment or vaccine in countries, but more importantly, to build the resilience of these countries. And I, I believe personally that health tech is an important component of building the resilience of health systems. And lastly, uh, it's a more personal reason. Uh, my, you know, my father was a pediatrician and Paula, Paula know it, my late father. He was a pediatrician who was uh, really passionate about, uh, about tech. He always told me that he has always been motivated by trying to be uh, ahead of the curve in terms of knowledge. And today is his, is his birthday. So another reason for me to be very excited about uh, joining this conversation. So I, I end here and say that uh, I am very happy and privileged to be with you today. And I very much look forward to learning uh, for, for this session. Thank you. Over to you, Paula. Thank you, Zeno. Um, well, with that great introduction, um, I'm just going to share my screen now very quickly. I'm going to go over a couple of slides uh, because I think the most important is for you to hear our experts in health tech. Uh, Monique and Rushira, but just to give you a sense of what we're currently doing in Israel. Um, so with that, hopefully the slide. So just to give you a quick uh, glance, we currently have a portfolio of 65 million with, uh, in five projects with three different companies, three different Israeli companies uh, on our portfolio. Uh, I've included the breakdown by industry and by region, and you'll see the bulk of this is in Sub-Saharan Africa, 62%, which is our region of priority uh, as uh, IFC and the Development Bank, but we also have presence uh, or activities with Israeli companies in Europe and Central Asia, in Asia and the Pacific. The important point to highlight is that um, we work in all emerging markets, so although we're only seeing three regions here, we also include South Asia as well as, as Latin America. Uh, as part of the regions of our coverage. Uh, by industry, there's a big focus on what we call manufacturing, agribusiness, and services. Uh, it's 65% of the portfolio. And our health uh, tech uh, focus or health uh, traditional investments falls here. Um, and hopefully we will grow. Uh, this picture is as of June 30, 2020, which is the end of our uh, fiscal year. Uh, we did a new investment uh, since then in the tech space. So what we hope to do after this webinar and hopefully many of the discussions we'll have later today is to grow the portfolio by industry uh, and add the, a new industry, which is a disruptive technology space, which is Monique and uh, Rishira represented. Um, I think it's important also to highlight two recent transactions that we've done. So it gives you a sense of who we have partnered with. Uh, one is Netafim, as you know, it's a very big company in Israel. It's focused on agri-tech uh, irrigation. Uh, we did a 65, 69 million financing, of which 42 million came from IFC. 
key, and it was to uh, support the operations and expansion in a variety of emerging markets, including Africa and Turkey. Uh, but we uh, also Paola, did. Paula, excuse Sorry? me, if you could, if you could um, be a little bit closer to the microphone. Sometimes you're. Oh, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Great. Oh, so sorry. Thank you. So I think the second uh, investment, which I think is the most relevant to the session this morning um, or this afternoon for the Israelis, is a sea tree investment. Um, this was a $10 million ticket in the Series B uh, financing round, which raised $30 million, um, uh, which was led by IFC. And I think we're very proud of this investment because it's in the health sec in the tech sector, in agri-tech, which is a, a key priority for IFC, and where we're using, supporting a company that has developed key technology for agribusiness in Brazil, and where we hope to, to help them expand in other markets. Uh, so this gives you a sense of our activity in, in recent activity in Israel, which will hopefully encourage you in terms of the opportunities that we might have in the health tech space. Then, as mentioned uh, by Usegno and Yufat, I think uh, Monique will also touch upon this and Ushira on their presentation, but I think it's an opportunity to thank the Ministry of Economy and Industry for their contributions to the IFC Tech Emerge programs, both in Brazil and India. Uh, they have uh, donated $1.8 million, which has helped us uh, launch these programs and have them be very successful. Um, there's some key highlights here of, of the events, and I think the important thing to highlight is that Israeli companies did uh, quite well in both uh, editions of the Tech Emerge Health, and, and we're hoping this is only the start of a, of a stronger partnership and hopefully of finding opportunities for us to invest in health tech in Israel. So that's a very short uh, overview. I think the most interesting part of the presentation this morning will be given by Monique and Rushira. Uh, here is our contact information. I understand as well that the Ministry of Economy will share this presentation with everyone that is attending. So feel free to reach out to either Usaino and I going forward and we'll be happy to, to start a conversation and hopefully find opportunities to work together in emerging markets. Thank you, Yifat. Wonderful. So Monique and Rushira, floor is yours. Right. Thank you. Uh, Monique is just sharing the screen. Okay, so our department is called the Disruptive Technologies and Funds Department. Um, and Monique, if you can go to the next slide. About IFC, I guess a lot of you already know about IFC and there's a lot of data on this slide, but big picture, we are a member of the World Bank Group, AAA credit rating, and are very active working in emerging markets, supporting all sectors. Uh, and our goal is to eliminate poverty and improve shared prosperity through our interventions. Uh, we are present in over 100 countries and have over 2,000 private sector clients uh, with about 4,000 people. We have invested we have given advice, we have done ecosystem building initiatives across the sectors we're active in. Next one, please. So these are the sectors almost every sector for businesses in emerging markets. There's manufacturing, agri and services. Our financial institution group, which includes insurance, banks, NBFCs, um, affordable housing, a whole range of financial institutions, infrastructure and natural resources. This includes water, power, roads, ports, railways, and the like. And the disruptive technology and funds team to which both Monique and I belong. Uh, this is the team that is focused on investing in disruptive technology, early stage startups, supporting venture capital funds, as well as support supporting private equity funds. And we support these different sectors through four, four ways of, in, of intervening. The first one is the investment. So it could be a loan investment, an equity investment, trade finance. It could be blended finance, where we try to get a competitive rate of uh, lending to the, to the investee company. So there's a whole bunch of investment instruments that we could use. The second product is the advisory piece, where it's about knowledge sharing, and consultative support. These are initiatives that IFC defines and works with 
the target company. Oftentimes, these are donor funded. On occasion, they, the cost is shared both by the company being supported as well as the donor organization. The third product area is what we call upstream. Upstream came into being because we realized that if we were only going to invest in opportunities that were commercially viable and proven to be investable, we would be very limited in our work. So upstream focuses on early stage project development, identifying those areas where IFC and World Bank Group interventions could make that sector more investable, could create tangible opportunities and create global delivery platforms, platforms that stitch together assets and therefore show commercial viability to new business models. And those we would then subsequently support with either the investment product or advisory product. So number three on this chart will eventually lead to more of number one and more of number two. And the fourth one is the asset management company. The asset management company is the unit within IFC that manages third party funds. So this, these are funds where IFC is an LP, but a large part of the corpus is coming from other limited partners. And the asset management company has funds that are then invested alongside IFC. They don't do any independent investments. When we do an investment, we bring them alongside us if it fits their strategy. Next one, Monique. In the disruptive technology and funds team, uh, we have been investing for quite some time now and we have a vast portfolio. Uh, on the private equity fund side, we are one of the largest investors in emerging markets and have invested in over 350 funds. On the VC side, we have done a lot of direct investments across sectors, across countries for a total of 1.2 billion. And these are 63 direct assets that we own. But we've also done about 50 venture capital funds. These are funds that invest in Series A, seed investments, there are accelerators, Series B stage funds. So anywhere between seed and acceleration stage all the way to Series B and Series C. That's the portfolio of what disruptive tech and funds does. The other thing to keep in mind is amongst the DFIs out there in the world, IFC has really been a leader here because a lot of DFIs have not embraced tech to the same extent as IFC has. We've been a trendsetter. We've realized almost a decade ago that tech would pervade everything. And therefore it was important for us to be champions in that space. And that's how disruptive tech and funds came about. This is how we engage. And as you can see in this slide, we are engaging at various stage of the entrepreneurship life cycle. At the proof of concept and incubation stage, we have a product called the IFC Startup Catalyst. This is an envelope of funds that we use to invest in very early stage fund managers. These could be seed stage fund managers or managers that are running accelerators and incubators. And we do that because we feel that at that early stage, a lot of new businesses are not really investable. They need to be handheld, they need to be groomed, they need to be nurtured. And that's what comes through the seed stage mechanisms and the incubation and acceleration platforms that we support. There is also a product in that early stage called SME Ventures uh, Program, which again supports fund managers, but these are fund managers whose entire focus is on supporting SMEs. So they may not be early stage. These may be businesses that have existed for a decade or two, but they continue to stay small. And so these small and medium enterprises have their own set of challenges. And they are fund managers that we are supporting to help these SMEs continue to remain viable, survive through crisis, and eventually scale to be larger enterprises. And on the right-hand side of the chart, you have the scale, growth, and exit. This is where our direct investing as well as our VC fund investing, growth equity funds, which is PE fund investing comes into play. These are more mature companies. They may be technology underpinned companies or they may be non-tech companies, but it, these are investments where we either take a direct equity stake or they are supported by our portfolio VC funds or our portfolio private equity funds. 
And the last bracket out there, which says co-investments. Co-investments is where IFC takes an investment alongside one of its portfolio VC funds or PE funds. And it's considered a separate bucket because these are investments where we are seen as aligned with the fund manager that we are investing alongside. So we do a lighter touch involvement and the fund manager manages that position for us. I briefly mentioned up IFC upstream. So that's the blue box on the left of this, um, bottom left of the slide. Upstream, as I said, is any initiative that helps develop the market and create investable opportunities. Uh, we could talk about specific exa examples, but the goal is usually to create either more digital skills that can lead to more entrepreneurs, no, more businesses being created. Digi Health, which is about supporting digital interventions in the healthcare space. Um, scaling entrepreneurship and investments that there are examples which aren't listed here. There's something called VFI where we are getting involved to support women entrepreneurs and any business that is run or founded by a woman. This is a bit about our funds team and um, the funds team came to exist in 2000 and we have led and coordinated with DFIs to establish uh, standards of investing in emerging market private equity funds. You see some logos there. These are the first time funds that IFC has backed and they have now grown to be top local funds in the, mar in the markets they exist in. Some of them have expanded from one market to a few other countries and expanded their portfolios. We work closely with MPR that was set up by IFC as an association of emerging market PE funds. And we work with Cambridge Associates to organize an annual conference that allows a dialogue between fund managers, LP, which is limited partners that invest in fund managers and discuss various challenges that need to be overcome in order to make the PE ecosystem grow productively. Uh, these are the, the, to the sort of two sides of what VC funds are trying to address uh, in the rising tech trends in, in emerging markets. There are sometimes new patterns in, and they vary by country. So there are some countries like India where I am, where the, the rise of mobile internet and internet platforms has taken the market by a storm. Computing power is cheap, data prices are following, following and that has resulted in new approaches to data mining, new business models that are choosing to disrupt traditional industries with the use of technologies. And as more and more people get connected, data is becoming ubiquitous. And you guess, as you get more data, you get more information that allows you to build smarter solutions. So those are some of the tech patterns that are leading to the change in those markets. And when we marry those kind of market specific phenomena with what IFC brings in, we have the right com combination for impact and financial returns. We bring deep sector understanding. We bring deep, deep regional knowledge because we have offices in over the over 100 em emerging markets. We have the capacity to research and invest large amounts of money in even smaller and earlier stage companies. And we have local partnerships. We can also bring operational expertise to bear. And this we do both through our direct investments as well as our VC fund investments. This gives you a, a snapshot of our VC fund portfolio globally. I won't go into individual names, but you can see it's a pretty big portfolio in China. It's pretty um, you know, moderate size and growing in India, MENA, and then there are, there's increasing presence in Africa, LAC, and some funds which we call global because they cut across markets. I spoke briefly earlier about the SME Ventures and the Startup Catalyst Program. Um, SME Ventures, as I said, targets private equity funds in frontier markets, but smaller tickets because they help smaller companies. Uh, Startup Catalyst, again, is, is a program that helps earlier stage funds and accelerators, smaller ticket investments from IFC. And both these products are focused on building out the ecosystems in emerging markets. And so they are more relevant in those economies where VC, cap VC capital is hard to get, startups are struggling to scale, and they, these initiatives are geared towards building out the VC ecosystem in those markets. 
Uh, on the various products, I mentioned the headlines uh, in the previous slide, but some of more detail here on direct investment, our ticket sizes could be anywhere between five to $20 million. I must mention that when we go alongside our asset management company, we can even invest more than that. So we can go up to 45 to $50 million in some cases. We look for at least one strong co-investor on the cap table because we realize that building a company requires more than just the management team, the board and the investors have a strong role to play. We target outsized returns, so almost 10x is our goal in every investment we do. And of course, in reality, we won't get there. Some investments will be 2x or 3x, others will be 5x. But as our portfolio, our, our the IFC Global portfolio is performing very well and is returning a, a multiple, which is better than most GPs out there in emerging markets. On VC funds, we can invest anywhere between 5 million um, to 20, but the average is about 10 million. And we focus on funds that are multi-sector and have a regional strategy. Um, the ecosystem building initiatives, I've mentioned Startup Catalyst. Uh, Tech Emerge is a program that Paula mentioned earlier, is a program where we introduce new technologies to emerging markets. And uh, thank you again for the Israeli government support in our Tech Emerge programs. Um, in different countries. I mentioned VFI. Uh, Scalex is another program where we are working with accelerators to motivate them to increase capital support to women entrepreneurs. So lots of ecosystem building. Uh, another thing I should mention there, we are in close conversations with various regulators because we do think of it as our role to help regulators um, think about forward-looking regulations so that the regulation can make create an enabling environment for more innovation and tech disruption to happen. And we as DFIs and World Bank Group are really trusted. The government values are input. And so we are in regular conversations with them about new sectors and new technologies. Focus sectors, health tech, almost everything out there that uh, can meet two objectives. Uh, impact as well as financial returns. So we are double bottom line focus and our portfolio spans um, a bunch of sectors. As you can see, these are closely aligned with our other departments, manufacturing, agri-services and infrastructure. FinTech uh, sits within the FIG team. So that's not something that our team uh, manages, but we work closely with FinTech because FinTech is also now getting into almost every space. Uh, if you can look at a health tech platform and it will have a financing component. We have an edutech platform and it has a financing component. So I think as tech becomes all pervasive, some of these lines are blurring and we have a lot of embedded finance in the business models we support. Big portfolio, as you can see, uh, you may recognize some names. So I won't go into individual names. You've seen Appeal be mentioned before, uh, C3 was mentioned before, but um, a vast uh, portfolio across sectors, and this also spans um, a whole range of regions. Over to you, Moni. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jira. So I'm going to take you through a little bit um, in more detail what IFC has done in the healthcare space. Um, so just to give you a sense, um, you know, IFC has is one of the largest. Um, private sector investors in healthcare and emerging markets. Um, in aggregate, we've done about six and a half billion of investments um, in these markets. Two thirds of those investments roughly is um, in large health service providers in these markets. So for example, um, Apollo Hospital Group out of India, which is one of the largest hospital chains in India is a long-term client of IFC. Uh, you have folks like Red Jador out of Brazil, uh, and so these are so typically these are the larger hospital networks in these markets, um, lab diagnostic chain, imaging chains, etc. And then one third has been more traditionally around um, pharma. So that's not innovative drugs, but really that value chain of API, finished formulation, retail distribution. And then more recently, probably in the last couple of years, we started to invest more deeply into the med tech space. And I've actually just recently hired a, a med tech specialist focusing specifically on particularly going concern assets in that space. So IFC invests um, you know, in the space across you know, mature assets, as, as Ruchiro was mentioning, um, and in the healthcare portfolio, that's about 60%, 70% is, is would be like long-term debt type of products. 
and the balance would be equity or quasi equity type of products. I wanted to mention a recent program that was launched. Um, this is through COVID, it's called the Global Health Platform. And this is really focused on, um, it was sort of a unique platform that was launched in response to COVID and, and, and runs for about three years. And the idea is, is to bring in IFC's capital, but also to mobilize capital to um, further invest in areas uh, which need additional support as a, and were identified as part of, of the challenges around COVID. Um, so this includes um, health service providers possibly, so focusing on the diagnostics piece within co countries or the health services. Vaccine production is a really key part of it, and, and there's already been a couple of projects approved in around vaccine production. Um, and, and the third area is around, um, uh, around uh, med, med tech solutions that would be relevant, um, PPE, ventilators, uh, and also focusing on um, APIs, which were found to be a challenge in terms of sourcing for the, for the projects. I wanted to bring this to your attention because it's, an, it's a sort of a window that we have to work in a slightly different way um, as a result of COVID and, and, and it was set as a priority. In terms of where we sit in terms of health tech, um, you know, it, it, within our disruptive technology, uh, we've done about 60 million of investments to date. Uh, our focus areas um, are really around you know, data and analytics, which the trend future was mentioning, and we see this as very relevant um, in, our, in, in health tech, virtual care, which of course has accelerated through COVID. Uh, we have a focus also on femtech, um, given institutionally we have a priority, priority around um, you know, women entrepreneurship, et cetera. Um, and, and so femtech is an area where we're, we're now trying to uh, go deeper in genomics and, and point of care type of solutions, and then what we call advanced tech. So this is really tech, which would most likely originate out of what we call part one, which would be you know, Israel or US or Europe, but which is really a globally deployable solution that can reach anywhere. Um, you know, in terms of how we sort of build our, our, our pipeline, you know, it really comes through our relationships with our seed and accelerator funds or PE funds. Uh, we also have a broad network of relationships with funds um, outside of those that we invest directly in. And of course, Tech Emerge, which I'll go into um, in a little bit more detail we've already mentioned. I think a sweet spot for us typically is around Series B. We really look for companies that already have some commercial traction and where the business model is already proven out and what we do is invest in that ramp up. So, you know, if the solution is a very globally deployable solution, it doesn't necessarily need to have emerging market traction at this point. Through our advisory services, we can help work with that company to bring them into those markets, uh, or we invest directly with companies that are based in those in those markets. Um, and this is just a snapshot of our, our portfolio um, to, to date. We've talked already about Tech Emerge, and again, I will also thank the, the Israeli government for their um, incredible support of the program. In fact, I think the program would never have gotten off the ground had we not had the support. And, my first trip to Israel was actually because of the program. Um, and we've always had a really good number of, you know, I think incredibly strong Israeli companies that have participated in the program. So as Paula mentioned, we ran the program initially in India. That program moved into Brazil in 2018 to 20 and is currently being run in East Africa. Um, the program, I think, is that, you know, when we started the program, it was really about trying to help technology acceleration into these markets and linking tech innovators from around the world with uh, corporates, whether those be hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, insurance companies, or corporates in those markets and trying to help them to accelerate those technologies. The program itself has now moved into other sectors as well. There's, an, there's a cooling program that's currently being run across multiple geographies. Um, I think it's it's been a, you know, a, a really great way for us to get visibility in terms of solutions and also really help support both the tech companies, but also the corporates sort of shortlist and identify uh, different solutions. So this is just a really brief case study of one of our, our, our portfolio companies, which is called 1MG. Um, this is the largest um, digital health platform uh, in, in, in India. Uh, 
Yeah, for us, I think it was that, you know, we, as Richard mentioned, we look for a commercial return, but we also look for development impact. And so M1MG operates uh, both as uh, in, in, in e-pharmacy, so online pharmacy, they added in a um, component around e-diagnostics, so facilitating the whole diagnostics process. And then they also added in an online consultation. So it really became a virtual solution. And through COVID, um, you know, the business has grown, you know, quite well because of the need to 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 move digital. Uh, I think for us, you know, it, it was a it's also a way to um, it, it, to focus on sort of the the access piece, the affordability piece. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a model that we're also now seeing in, in more markets, particularly in Asia, some emerging in, in Africa, that are, are trying to sort of replicate this type of, of business model. I think what we'd like to do now is move into um, a question and answer. So I will um, I'll stop sharing my screen here.